This is the story of the one. As head of maintenance at a concert hall, he knows the show must always go on. That's why he works behind the scenes, ensuring every light is working, the HVAC is humming, and his facility shines. With Granger's supplies and solutions for every challenge he faces, plus 24-7 customer support, his venue never misses a beat. Call quickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Joe Dredge. Hey, hey, hey. Mornings on WROK. Over 95 years in the books and, and still, still on top. top. This is Rockford's News Talk 1440 WROK. Six minutes after eight at News Talk 1440 WROK. It's a Monday morning. It's Riley and Joe here with you. Partly cloudy and 60 is where we sit. 86 is where we're going. Chance of getting precipitation today is only 1%. Sounds good. Yep. Looks cloudy. Looks like it could rain, but it's not going to, according to what we're being told. And looking at the radar, there's nothing. Just some cloud cover. So 86 the high today, 59 the low tonight. Tomorrow, cloudy 81. We've got a 35% chance of drawing some rain. It just says rain, not thunder and lightning, but rain. Uh, Wednesday, though, clears up. All sun all day. We're looking at 80. Thursday, all sun all day. Looking at 80 again. Both days with about a 2% chance of precipitation. And then Friday's 82 and partly sunny, still with a 2% chance of rain. I'm good. Not a bad week at all. all right. And uh, right now, like I said, partly cloudy. We're sitting at 60. Uh, winds are absolutely calm and humidity is at 70%. Okay. Y'all, y'all recovered from your uh, multiple Taylor Swift concerts you went to over the weekend? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I put a post up on our uh, website last week uh, talking about the amount of people uh, trying to um, um, execute scams. Oh, and yeah. uh, the amount of people who are being taken advantage of, losing thousands of dollars. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I finally scored tickets to Taylor Swift at Soldier Field. It cost me three grand and all that. Uh, those tickets are counterfeit. Uh, you're not getting anywhere, and the money's gone. Yeah, I found out too that uh, yeah, because one thing that uh, I don't know if she does it all the time or this is a, a, a standard thing, but uh, there were some late emails going out to uh, lists of you know, like last second available tickets that were legit. Uh, but when you have things like that going on and you people checking their email, you know, every minute to see right. if they got that email. And then when something comes through and says, uh, you know, uh, they'll, they're, they're ready to bite. Mm. That's an easy scam on, on somebody ready to bite on things like that. So. Well, my, my, my post at our website at 1440wrok.com, which we encourage you to visit mm-hmm. the website or even better, download the, the WROK app. Yeah. app. You'll get all that stuff right there. Uh, save the day for my own daughter. Oh, that's right. She went. No. Oh, she did. No, she did not go. Uh, the, she uh, she's got tickets to Post Malone later on at Alpine Valley. Gotcha. That's okay. what they're going to see. They've mm-hmm. caught the Jonas Brothers on mm-hmm. their tour. But uh, yeah, the, the the hope was to go see Taylor Swift because she's a twenty five year old girl, <laughs> and isn't that what they all want? What you do when yep. you're twenty five year old? Pretty girl. much. <laughs> um, and uh, I got a thanks, Dad. Um, I was this close to saying okay to uh, a ticket offer oh, that really? I had stumbled across, and I would have been scammed had mm-hmm. it not been for reading your post. Nice. <laughs> well, I don't know if she read my post, but, but Amy read it and uh-huh. shoved it in front of her. <laughs> read this. Before you give out a credit card, read what your dad mm-hmm. just wrote here. Yeah. And um, luckily it didn't happen. But yeah, we're talking thousands of dollars. Oh, yeah. Thousands yeah. of dollars. And, you know, it was one of those where it's like, well, you understand, don't you, dad? No. 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 No, but. There's no performer or group of performers that I would ever pay that kind of money to go see. No, I wouldn't. I'm, Just I'm, no. I'm not even paying face for, uh, I mean, face value for some of those tickets were, were 250, 300 bucks. Nope. Ah. Uh. Nope, just not, it's a lot. Just not gonna do it. I guess I guess the big thing to do, uh, uh, you know, if you couldn't get in, into the concert, was to uh, just go and tailgate. Like, apparently, the tailgating scene was insane. Yeah, there were some stadiums as well that apparently there's there were hills nearby yeah. that one could basically catch the jumbotron from I don't know a half a mile mm-hmm. away and and hear it clearly on what was going on, and that's what people were doing and saving themselves a couple of bucks. Yeah, which I salute that. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, so it, if uh, you can pull that off, good for you. I'm not sure how many they're. Fi- Fitting into Soldier Field for this eight eighty thousand maybe something like that Cause something it, cause like you can that usually put fifty some odd uh, like for a Bears game and then you know everybody on, on the field too but uh, yeah apparently uh, the parking lots were were just jammed with people uh, uh, with blankets and chairs and just taking in the concert from outside that sounds like the way to go. 
There honest. are lots of concerts that are taking place over the summer. None, none of them are measuring up to to this to this, one. To this tour. Yeah, no, to the overall uh, impact. Uh, you know, this could be a billion dollar tour. And she's it, it, the marketing on this is so genius too. I mean, yep. I mean, they're going through. I, I mean, I don't know if you know about you know like the special songs for each con. I mean, she is such a huge library. Yep. Apparently, each each concert is getting uh, uh, special performances. Uh, you can only hear this song at that one, and that song at this one. And uh, I, I guess uh, uh, numerous guests too have uh, have graced the stage at the Taylor Swift concert because who wouldn't want to share the stage with Taylor Swift right now? <laughs> I, I I don't know why you wouldn't. I, I mean, it, it, it's it's ringing your own cash register just by stepping onto the yeah. stage. No, no, uh, yeah, she's uh, she is a force. She's a phenom. There's, she's a phenom. there's no doubt about it. But let's see what kind of longevity we're talking about when you look at this. Yeah. Dolly Parton. Oh yeah, okay. Dolly Parton has added three. Count them three new Guinness World Records. Is one of them just being the nicest? It ought to be. Okay, right. That ought to be a category. <laughs> right. uh, yeah, three new world records and cemented really her legendary status with the longest span of number one hits. Information mm-hmm. posted on the Guinness Book of World Records website at the end of May said Dolly Parton was awarded the titles at an exclusive presentation in Nashville. Guinness said Dolly's newest titles include... Longest span of number one hits on U.S. top country albums chart for a female. Wow. For 43 years, 156 days on Billboard's top country albums chart, starting with hits from her 1977 album, New Harvest, First Gathering, through her album of last October, A Holly Dolly Christmas. Mm -hmm. 43 years, 156 days on Billboard's top country albums chart. That's a record. Wow. Most studio albums released by a female country singer. Dolly has 65 studio albums ranging from 1967's Hello, I'm Dolly to 2022's Run, Rose, Run. So 67 was her, was her first album? Yep. First album. Most recent one last year. Okay. so I, 65 I mean, studio albums. It's pumping out, I mean, more than one a year. Yep. Sure is. Jeez. Most top 10 entries on the U.S. Top Country Albums chart for a female. For Diamonds and Rhinestones, the Greatest Hits Collection, Dolly's 48th Top 10 entry on Billboard's Top Country Albums chart. Wow. Now, you add these three new world records. Uh, she now holds 10 in total. 10 records. Yeah. These, are, these three new ones happened at the end of May. These are the ones that she'd already had. Most decades with a top 20 hit on the U.S. Hot, uh, US hot Country Songs chart. Okay. Most number one hits on the U.S. Hot Country Songs chart by a female. Most decades on the U.S. Hot Country Songs chart by a female. Most hits on the U.S. Hot Country Songs chart by a female. Longest span of number one hits on the U.S. Hot Country Songs chart. First country singer to be nominated for the EGOT. Yeah. Emmy, Grammy, mm-hmm. Oscar, Tony. And most Grammy nominations for a female country artist. That's uh, pretty good. We went to Facebook uh, to share. Guinness went to Facebook to share her accomplishment. Quoted her saying, I share these three honors with my fans who have allowed me to enjoy such a long career. She's very um, cognizant oh, of that kind of thing. Big too. time. Yep. Her next announced album, Rock Star, available for pre-order, released on November 17th. Has already mentioned some of the legends who will be joining her on a 30-track album. Paul McCartney, Ringo Starr, John Fogarty, Sting, and Elton John will all be joining her. At 77 years of age. Is that how she is? Yep. Yeah, I think of her as ageless. It's one of those she that, really uh, you know, she'll end up being 100, and I'll still think of her as I thought of her in 1980. Absolutely. And she is the type that may live to be 100. She just seems Let's to be... hope so. Absolutely. Yeah, I, let's I, hope so. Do you remember any health scares with her at all? No. Me neither. No, not that I'm aware of. Not a single thing. Um, but it strikes me as the kind that, yep, I've, I've never been sick a day in my life. Exactly. No, I, I had, had a cold I once. Had a cold. I think back in the 60s. Yeah, uh, a cold I haven't too. had a cold since then. Right. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. She's just, uh, I, I saw some video that someone had taken of a restaurant in Nashville that, uh, the, there was a group of women and, uh, I think there was like three women, four women, and, uh, one of them was running her camera because the doors of the joint, this breakfast joint, brunch joint, whatever, come flying open. And some very large men come in. I think four of them. Yeah. Two to the right, two to the left, looking the place over and all that other stuff. Uh, one of them, uh, you know, does an earpiece or, or says something and, um, in comes more 
and Dolly's in the midst of all of them. Mm-hmm. It's Dolly's entourage and, and all that. Which normally you would think, oh, great. Now we got the security goons looking around. Now don't look at her. Don't make eye contact. Don't you dare talk to her. And all yeah. Dolly comes in and starts hitting tables. Just docking. Just starts hitting tables. Comes right over to the table where the women are, where, where the women are filming it and said, hi, you know, where are you guys from? What's good? They're here at the menus out. What's good on the menu? She goes, I'm just kidding y'all. I come here all the time. <laughs> But Good for her. yeah, I mean, it, it came in like true VIP mm-hmm. with all of the accoutrements of an entourage and security and all that other stuff. But then it turns out to be super down to earth. Yeah, can't wait to talk to everybody here and then uh, sit down for a plate of eggs. I mean, I'm sure she uh, security makes her feel better, but does she need security? Who's going after Dolly? I think the security <laughs> would probably be for that over vociferous fan who Maybe won't let her one. go, all who right. wasn't content with a "Hey, how you doing?" but wanted more. Yeah, maybe Dolly also has some other attractors that uh, maybe need need to be swatted away occasionally. Yeah, I wouldn't think anybody's going to be up giving her a hard time. No. I think it would just be more of, I just want to be next to her. I just want to talk to her. Uh, she strikes me as like an old friend. Um, that's probably the danger uh, of that kind of celebrity mm-hmm. when you have that reputation of being super nice. Yes. And Everybody's going to believe it. Yeah, it. come on up and hang out and say hey and and that sort of thing. You know, when I, when I, uh, when I just Googled Dolly Parton to find out how old she was, one of the first stories that popped up is why does she always wear gloves or, or long sleeves? Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't really either. Uh, kind of, it just shows that uh, no matter how beautiful you are, you still have, uh, body issues, uh, apparently. Uh, in 2019, the singer's, uh, creative director revealed Parton favors long sleeves and gloves, uh, because she doesn't like her elbows. Uh, and then they, uh, she has. What's wrong with her hands? She's seventy three. She doesn't like them. It's a normal woman thing. <laughs> She's also discussed covering scar tissue with tattoos. I don't really like to make a big to do with the tattoos because people make such a damn deal over every little thing. She said in two thousand seventeen. But most of the tattoos, when I first started, I was covering up some scars that I had because I had a tendency to have keloid star, scar tissue. I have a tendency where if I have any kind of scars anywhere, then they have a purple tinge that I can never get rid of. So mine are all pastels, what few that I have, and they're meant to cover some scars. I'm not trying to make some big, bold statement. So I like, nice. I don't know if she had any tattoos, but I like the fact she's like pastel. Like I figure tattoos are very dainty and Right. Gorgeous. Yeah. And people make such a big deal about all of it. Big, big damn deal about everything. Yep. She's on the list of uh, celebrities who are approachable and who are nice, but, you know, don't hang around too long. That's always the key to meeting any people like that. And don't, if they're eating dinner and all that, don't. Yeah. If they have a moment, then yes. But, um, you know, th- there comes a point where, you know, they just kind of want to eat too. They're, they're people. Uh, Board Panda, 50 people that were surprised at how nice these celebrities were in real life. Okay. Uh, Robin Williams uh, among the tops He's on the list. I'd always, always read that there. too. Mm-hmm. He said, I was jogging at the San Francisco Marina back in 1988. I think it was. And I saw Robin Williams sitting in the side of his van, just kind of chilling, watching people run around. I said, how you doing, Mr. Williams? He said, I'm doing great. You running from the cops? <laughs> I laughed, stopped to chat with him for about five minutes. He was delightful. It's one of my favorite memories. I cried when I heard he was dead. Wow. Yeah, I've heard that about him, too. Just uh, always had time for people. Tom Hanks at Best Buy. He was in line in front of me with a cart full all by himself. I was only buying a bottle of water because they didn't have what I was looking for <laughs> at Best Buy. <laughs> I just blurted out, Forrest Gump is my favorite movie. Like a complete <laughs> creep. <laughs> And he turned around and he said, that was my favorite movie to make. I'm glad you love it. He then chatted with me for a while about movies while we stood in line when it was his turn to check out. While they were ringing up his stuff, he said, oh, let me get that water for you and paid for my water. Oh, what a good guy. He kept talking to me. And then we walked out. He said, nice talking to you. You're a very nice young lady. And always remember, life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Only he did it in the Forrest Gump voice. It was the coolest thing ever. What a good guy. What a good guy. (laughs) uh, by the way, by the way I, I, just a quick side Forrest Gump story. Apparently, the 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 the, the accent he had wasn't the original accent they were going to have, but the the kid that they had playing him young already had that accent. So he just went with that. So he went with that instead of finding a new kid with it or making the kid do an accent. He said, "I'll just do the accent." Crazy, <laughs> right? and it worked. It did. It worked. Uh, Patrick Stewart. 
Oh, yeah. Sister was waiting tables in New York, ended up serving Patrick Stewart, didn't want to bother him, so she just did her job. And at the end of the night, she told him how much she enjoyed seeing him in a production of Hamlet that year and that she hoped he was planning to do more theater in the U.S. My sister was prepared to leave it at that, but apparently he was so thrilled that someone had wanted to talk about his theater work as opposed to Star Trek. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Then he ended up talking to my sister for a while about his experiences on stage, a really nice guy who loves what he does. I have heard that about some stars. If, If somebody is known for something, Thing, and you talk to them about something else, you, 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 you like oh totally they light it. up. They're like oh I can finally talk about it. oh you like this let's, yeah let's talk about that. I was in a Walmart. There was something I needed on the top shelf near the back. At the time, I was only about five feet tall. I'm a little taller now. So I scaled up the shelf and over to the side to get the item that I wanted. When I climbed back down, I noticed this dude was watching me. Then I realized that dude was Bruce Willis, oh. who told me I had some pretty cool Spider-Man <laughs> skills before he moved on. I, I, the, Bruce, I, I couldn't get that either. <laughs> right. He's a short exactly. guy. Yeah. Uh, Paul and Linda McCartney once came into a restaurant I was a hostess at. I greeted him and his wife, led them to, to their reserved tables, said my lines, and left. When they were leaving, he leaned toward me and thanked me for treating him like a normal person, oh. saying... It doesn't happen very often, and we really appreciate it. I'm sure it does it, and I'm sure they do. Uh, he knew I knew who he was because Linda had said she loved my necklace. It was a yellow submarine from the Beatles album. God, and you still show the restraint not to say anything to Right? <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. One more. Um, Brian Cranston. Yes. Yeah, a very approachable guy, too. Met Brian Cranston once at the Bellagio while on holiday in Vegas. I was a bit fanboyish and blurted out, oh, my God, it's Heisenberg. (laughs) Almost immediately, his facial expression went angry, and he walked straight up to me and actually muttered, how dare you call me out like that? If people knew who I was, I wouldn't be in this business. Next time you call me out like that, be ready for a barrel. (laughs) <laughs> then he smiled, started laughing. We talked for about 10 minutes or so. He gave me an autograph. I was so happy. Asked him if he wanted to join a few of us for a drink, but he politely declined as he was waiting for his wife and daughter. That's nice. He was very cool. Yeah, and uh, I like that he gets into character. He's a, he's a fun guy. He likes to have a good time. Uh, Grandma met Adam Sandler in an elevator in Mexico. She speaks no English, but Adam was kind enough to try to speak Spanish with her. She was delighted. <laughs> she now loves him and watches Every single one of his movies. Probably had no idea who he was. None. None, none whatsoever. <laughs> a nice young man was trying to talk to me in the yellow <laughs> Yeah, he didn't speak Spanish very well. No. 823, here's Hannity. Turn up your... Over 95 years in the books and And still still on on top. top. This is Rockford's News Talk 1440 WROK. 828 News Talk 1440 WROK. Current conditions, some clouds, 62 degrees. Uh, you know, I love uh, I love the Chicago museums. Uh, you know, Shen uh, Planetarium Museum of Science and Industry. Uh, the one that it's kind of embarrassing. Uh, I've never been to the Field Museum. Just. I don't know how I missed it. I, I think there was a field trip at some point in high school that I just didn't go to. And uh, oh, the field museum just calls them trips. It's trips. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's right. Uh, I, I mean, I, you know, I think I love the uh, sheds. One of my absolute favorite places on sure. earth. Sure. Uh, museum of Science and Industry went there. Uh, that's where I always asked to go. So we just never made it to the field museum. Mm. Uh, I, I want to do it soon because the one I've just heard it's awesome, and uh, it is. And I do want to check it out. But they got a new exhibit. We got a new dinosaur. Oh, what do we have? Spinosaurus. Oh, Spinosaurus. Spinosaurus uh, just unveiled there on uh, on on Saturday. Uh, Forty six foot uh, tall uh, 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 skeleton. It's got uh, crocodile like uh, jaws and uh, big fins up top. You can see why it's called a Spinosaurus. Uh, but uh, yeah, and you see the other. What's this other? What's the other one called in the back? Uh, the other famous one they have. Uh, well, they've got the Sue, the T Rex. Sue, well, that's not that's not the T Rex. It's a brontosaurus. They got so many that's there. That's an apatosaur, I believe. Apatosaur, I believe it is. Wow. <laughs> all right, come on, I had kids. Oh, <laughs> well, was apatosaur a big one when you oh, were a kid? Oh, man, all dinos, all dinos, okay. big time. All right, so well, the Spinosaurus. Uh, get ready for your your six year old uh, to want a Spinosaurus. Uh, uh, dr- uh, I almost called him Dragon's Dinosaur after this. But, uh, yeah, Field Museum. That's on my to-do list here. Yeah, I'll, get it done, on, I'll get it done this summer. Yeah, put that on your bucket list. Now, as a kid, I, I in order of importance, uh, Museum of Science and Industry, Yo. Shed, Yo. Planetarium, Yo. then the field. Then the field. Then yeah. the field. Over 
95 years in the books and, and still, still on top. top. This is Rockford's News Talk 1440 WROK. It's 835 at News Talk 1440 WROK. It's Riley and Joe. It's a Monday morning. Partly cloudy and 62 is where we are now. 86 is our daytime high. Chance of precipitation is only at 1%. Very so, nice. Got that working for us. Uh, cooling off on the overnight. We're looking at an overnight low tonight of 59. A high tomorrow of 81. We do have a 35% chance of getting some rain on your Tuesday. Wednesday, we're back to sunshine at 80. Thursday, same thing. Sunshine, 80. Friday, partly sunny, 82. Best chance of rain is tomorrow at that 34%. Rest of the week today, we're at zero. Wednesday, 2%. 1% Thursday, 2% Friday. Sounds good. I think we can deal with that. Mm -hmm. I think Mm -hmm. we can deal with that one. All right. For anybody who uh, suffers whatsoever from insomnia. Yeah. I thought this was uh, kind of intriguing from uh, live science this morning. You ever have it? No, no. Uh, I use when I was younger. I used to occasionally, um, um, but uh, that was just in a hyperactive kid that didn't know how to settle down. Uh, but uh, no, no, it hasn't. You, you get it occasionally. I right? do get it yeah. occasionally. Yeah, about three, four times a year, yeah, I'll, okay. I'll hit a spate of it where uh, I will. I'll have some difficulty. Um, uh, I think the most recent one was a, a month or so back, where I looked at you and I said, "I, uh, I've been able to sleep for about forty-eight hours." <laughs> right. Well, no, and I don't like know, really know why. Um, um, you know, my mom, I think, uh, got things started off on the wrong foot when I was a kid when it would happen occasionally. And she would point out to me that was because I had done something bad. Oh, boy. The that, reason that you will. can't sleep is your conscience is is gnawing at you because of something you've done. That and um, Sit with you for a while. I think at times, maybe. But yeah. I, overall, I wasn't really doing anything that required that sort of insomnia. Mm-hmm. And uh, there were plenty of times that she accused me of it all just because I hadn't. Hadn't. Right. <laughs> hadn't really done anything about it. It just happens to some people at, at certain times. I found the key is not to lament it and, and get all worked up about it. No, just accept it. And... Look, there, there's been times that I've said to you when you've come in, uh, well, I've been here since before 3 o'clock. <laughs> yes, you have. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I, I walked in the door uh, one morning and a little after 2. Okay. Um, plenty of time to get stuff not, done. Plenty of quiet. Not sleeping here. Might as well get things done. Here. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of the way I approach it. Yep. Or if you can't, then find something that you like and, and, and binge on that a little bit. Or grab a book. Books mm-hmm. generally have a way of uh, countering insomnia. Yeah, that's how I came across, honestly, the whole world of ASMR and things like that, because I think one night I was looking for, uh, I, I went down, I tried to find like sleep his, hypnosis videos on YouTube, and yeah. uh, uh, that, that was part of them. And uh, that that helped. Uh, yeah, you, I there are a ton of videos on YouTube for people who are looking for something visual but calming. Yes, and there's usually some music that goes along with it, mm-hmm. and they'll they'll run for five or six hours. Yeah, my my also uh, my one of my biggest tricks for falling asleep is uh, C-SPAN two. Yeah, yeah, it's and watch the sausage making from just, Washington. Yeah, yeah, that'll do it. Pay attention. Just try to pay attention to it, and you're you're out in like three minutes. Right, it is the most boring channel of all time. Unless someone is really embarrassing themselves up there, really, yeah. uh, it's hard to it's hard to keep mm. that attention span going. If, if you're real lucky, they'll be running book TV. Right, <laughs> that's why they call it C-SPAN, not attention span, no. because there isn't one for it. No, that's the problem. <laughs> Live science points out uh, insomnia, really common sleep disorder. Um, and it's important, though, they say, to treat it if you're having problems with it. Yeah. Health experts warn against sleep medications due to the ton of side effects that they have and the potential for addiction. And I know you and I hate them. Yeah, I don't want any I, part of them. I, and I, I, I never take a sleep aid. I, I, I hate the way they make me feel. Yep. I usually can't go to sleep on them. And I've never found them reliable as far as making you go to sleep. What I have found them reliable to do is make you groggy the next day. Yeah, groggy the next day. And I always felt like... I, this is a weird explanation, but I've said it to people before, and they kind of understand what I mean. I've, uh, whenever I'm on them, I feel like my skeleton's too big for my body. <laughs> like, okay, like I feel That's like I, I feel like I can't stretch my legs out far enough. Right, <laughs> like I. I'm uncomfortable in my I'm own skin here. I'm uncomfortable on yep. those things. Yeah. Yep. Uh, let's see. A Canadian research study we found insomnia specifically was related to worse memory performance compared to those who have insomnia symptoms alone or no sleep problems. There can be other things that go along with having insomnia. Does it run in your family is a question you should ask. According mm-hmm. to a Swedish study, a genetic predisposition to insomnia is linked to an increased risk of coronary artery disease, stroke, and heart failure. It's especially concerning since an estimated 30% of the general population deals with the sleep condition on a regular basis. Okay. Uh, I tell you, it's, it's sleep stuff, it probably is hereditary because my dad and I have very similar sleep uh, 
habits. Okay, you that makes fall, sense. Fall asleep at the drop of the hat. Can't really wake us up sometimes, <laughs> <laughs> which is really weird. But you got somebody who won't respond, right? Uh huh. Yeah, you get away with it nice when you're younger. Uh, when you're older, you freak the hell out of everyone in your orbit. When you can't wake up, yeah. Mm-hmm. When you are, when someone is a, of a certain age and they're not going to wake up, that generally ambulances get called. How good are you being woken up and talked to? Like, if somebody wakes you up from sleeping, mm-hmm. how? Soon after you wake up, can they start telling you things and you have a conversation? Um, they can immediately. I would prefer they didn't. Okay. Um, uh, I have a little decompression time after crawling out from a nap or getting up in the morning. Don't, don't, don't hit me with facts and figures. Okay, and, but is, that's and, more and, and of a for for a minute or two. But no, I can grasp. But it's right more away. of an irritant thing. Yes. No, the, okay. Yes. yes. <laughs> if I ever have to wake my dad up for something, there's a solid. 30 to 45 seconds of just uh, baseline conversation. Mm-hmm. How's it going? No, it's good. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah. it, it is It is Saturday. Okay. Right. <laughs> you guys who do wake somebody up and start hitting them with, all right, now remember this number combination or we're all going to die. 3, 16, 49, 19. Okay. Do you have that? You're a sadist is what you, you got are. The Don't be waking people up and hitting them with stuff like that. No, 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 no. Yeah, we, we have a member of our household that believes that if you're on your feet, you're ready to talk and oh. at length. <laughs> and uh, that had to be nipped in the bud okay. very, very quickly because it was with well, the minute feet hit the floor. Yeah. No one in our house. And not many people I know yes. are ready for full-blown conversations. It is nice. I mean, uh, our job, uh, uh, the conversation you and I have in the morning is generally the first words that we speak. You yes. Know, plenty of time to wake up. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yes. Other than get out of the way, I'll say to one of the dogs. Right. But other than that, that's about it. Uh-huh. Um, best remedies for insomnia, according to those who are in the uh, sleep business. Not named C-SPAN 2. Correct. Mm-hmm. And they're not trying to really sell you anything, but but items in particular. Melatonin. Yeah. Okay. Over the counter sleep aid, most recommended insomnia remedy. Melatonin tells your brain it's sleep time. Naturally occurring hormone helps regulate the sleep wake cycle in your brain. Your body makes it n- at night when the light is low. Drawback the most common side effects of melatonin are daytime drowsiness, headache, dizziness, nausea, and in some cases, nightmares. Okay. Um, expert neurologist, Dr. Daniel Barone, by far the most common thing I recommend to patients is take melatonin, getting natural melatonin production back on track. For instance, with a dark bedroom and no screen time before bedtime is the most sustainable scenario, but taking an over the counter brand might do the trick short term. He recommends taking between one and three milligrams about an hour before sleep. If you have trouble falling asleep and immediately before, if you have trouble staying asleep. Okay. Okay. Uh, over the counter, by the way, that's Unisom. Unisom is the big one for that. Or, okay. you, or you can just buy melatonin. Okay, yeah, there, there, yeah. There's melatonin. There's melatonin X. There's mm-hmm. a, a bunch of different ones. Chamomile tea, sure. Gentle remedy with very few possible side effects. One of the most popular remedies for insomnia: drink warm milk or chamomile, chamomile tea before bedtime. Both are believed to have effects on the brain that make it easier for you to fall asleep, according to WebMD.com. Marketed as a before bed beverage for a reason. The herb chamomile has been used as a sleep aid for several thousand years, according to sleep expert Dr. Barron. The feeling of sipping on a warm beverage alone may elicit relaxation and sleepiness. Also, this type of remedy is not going to hurt you at all, and it might help. It might be worth a try. Uh, Another side effect of chamomile tea is it tastes disgusting. So... Uh, yes. Oh, you don't care for it? No, I, I say this as I'm drinking a, a mug of mango flavored tea right now. Mango tea? Spiced mango. Yes, from Trader Joe's. Excellent. Uh, delicious. But uh, yeah, ch- uh, chamomile. Chamomile. Uh, no, thank you. It uh, tastes like lotion. It's frequently recommended for insomnia as melatonin. No scientific backup. Chamomile is traditionally used to reduce muscle tension and anxiety, which in theory may help induce sleep. However, clinical trials have not shown the herb is helpful for insomnia. States verywellhealth.com. That said, those who can use some help winding down at night, a cup of warm chamomile tea might be helpful. If not, it's certainly not going to hurt you. Or you just drink some lotion flavored with lavender. <laughs> You'll be the same. I see the lotion. Okay. No, I don't say anything about that here. do that. Okay. No. All right. uh, moderate exercise. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Tire yourself out a little bit. Mm-hmm. Physical activity can improve your sleep. Researchers aren't completely sure why. <laughs> Think about it. Oh, yeah. uh, it's known moderate aerobic exercise boosts the amount of nourishing slow wave deep sleep you need, according to Johns Hopkins. Yep. Get out do stuff. Yep. Good sleep hygiene. Now, it's a little vague. 
Uh, essentially, good sleep hygiene means prepping your body for sleep in time by avoiding stimulants like caffeine or screens for a couple of hours before bedtime, keeping your work out of the bedroom and going to bed at nearly the same time every day. Mm-hmm. The blue light emitted from your smartphone, your tablet, or computer is sort of an electronic version of caffeine. It leaves your brain feeling revved up rather than relaxed and ready for sleep, making a point to turn the device off at least an hour before you turn in. Gotcha. You ever been a nighttime shower person? Um, Only when necessary. Okay. All right. That, that, uh, something else from my, my dad's sleep habit. He's always been a nighttime uh, shower person. Mine was too. Yeah, so you, uh, once he takes a shower, you know you got about 10 minutes to talk to him before he's asleep. <laughs> and then okay. it's over. It's over. <laughs> Another part of good sleep hygiene, keep the bedroom cool. Ideal temperature for sleep is about 65 degrees Fahrenheit. Eat at the same times each day. Lots of documentation that those who have irregular meals tend to have more problems getting sleep. I don't know if that's a chicken and the egg situation, though. If you're the type of the person that's eating irregular meals at different times, you, you probably don't have a nice sleep. Uh, a you don't routine. have a regular sleep You don't schedule. have a routine at night either. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and finally, valerian root. Oh. Like chamomile, natural remedy, frequently recommended by experts, although scientific backup is lacking. Valerian root is thought to have effects on the, uh, let's see, uh, gamma amino butric acid calming chemical in your brain. If melatonin doesn't work or patients don't want to take it, they suggest valerian root. 2015 review, uh, evidence-based complementary and alternative medicine journal concluded that a uh, few high-quality studies report modest benefits of valerian for insomnia patients. Like all supplements, though, there are side effects. Talk to your doctor before you take it because it can interact with something you may be taking. Okay. It appears there's no real brand name for valerian root Nope, out there. You just get it. Yep, you just grab it. Right. So, uh, yep, that's just a couple of experts, uh, expert recommendations of what you can do if you're having trouble sleeping at night. Okay. Chances are you nodded off halfway through this, so uh, we're glad we could help. You ever try counting sheep? Amy does that. She, does she really? Yeah, and swears by it. Literal sheep? Uh, no, um, cats. Cats? Yeah, Pogo, our uh, our, our, our late uh, uh-huh. house cat. Uh, second second she, appearance by Pogo in this show. Yep, <laughs> she, um, she counts Pogos jumping over a fence. Oh, is it over a fence? Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. Yep. She just didn't want to use sheep. She uses the cat, swears it works, and knocks her out <laughs> every time she tries it. Really? Yeah. All right. And there is some validity to that. I, I had read a piece not long ago saying that anything having to do with numbers. Oh, okay. You do a lot of stuff thinking about numbers, counting, and, and that sort of thing. When you're when you're tired or whatever else, it will help you not off. Okay. All right. Just some good breathing exercises works, too. Sure. That helps me. Sure. Or just skip sleeping. Think of all the stuff you can get done before all of a sudden you drop dead. Yeah, everything you have to do the next day. That's right. always a good thing to think about as you're sleeping. Right, you and how much do, you're not looking forward to it. Yeah, you can totally take care of it night in bed. <laughs> yeah, you really should worry yourself about it. Yep, do that. Yeah. Doctors won't tell you that, but we will. <laughs> yeah, it's 48, News Talk 1440, WROK. 97. For the ones who know safety isn't a catchphrase, it's a culture. And the ones who help make sure everyone makes it home safe. For the safety-minded who watch everyone's backs, Granger offers supplies and solutions for every industry, as well as safety assessments and training to keep your facilities safe and your people safer. Call, click Granger.com, or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done.